Wanda Draculas here, RK3 Designs, and I have a really cool tutorial for you guys today. We're going to be using a mixture of three different mica powders, actually four. We're going to have a really pretty blue earth mica. Today, we're going to be using some really cool products from Stone Coat Countertop. We're going to be using our brown, copper, bronze, and this beautiful blue earth mica powder. Love them. Also, we're going to be using the Stone Coat Countertop uh, epoxy. And uh, that's pretty much it. So we're gonna make a gorgeous finish with a little amount of products. So let's get started. I've already mixed up um, eight ounces of epoxy and I've split them into four separate cups and I've put the powder into the cups. So we're just gonna lay these powders down. This is gonna be mostly like a strie type um, pattern I guess technique. Strie is something that, or strie, I'm always told I've said that wrong, um, is just a very go-to technique I like to use. I really like the, the designs it gives. You can also use this if you're trying to maybe mimic a uh, wood grain effect. This is one of my most popular techniques that we teach in our classes here at the studio and people love it. They, uh, they, they love it. They call me all the time and say, hey, I did that technique and I added different colors and it really turned out cool. Now you'll notice my brown and my copper. There's not a lot of contrast between the two colors, but you'll be surprised once you get it out on your board, how it really does uh, give some level of depth in there because you know it is just slightly different. All right, so I've laid down my three brown micas and um, I'm going to use my hands. I love to use my hands. If you're using, uh, doing a large countertop or a large piece of furniture, you may want to just use your trial, but I like to use my hands. So I'm going to keep everything in a line. I'm not going in any kind of circles. I'm keeping everything in a line. I'm going to address my edges. I love working with metallics. You get crazy beautiful patterns on here. You could actually take this finish right here just with your hands let that set up and have yourself a really beautiful finish right just right here okay so i've laid down my uh brown tones earth tones in a striate pattern now i'm going to come back with my uh blue earth and i'm gonna get a little creative here i'm gonna see kind of where i want to put some color and i'm again just doing it kind of in a striate pattern being creative, not getting crazy, really going over those edges. I really want to address those edges. And then I'm just going to kind of put them in a little bit. All right, so, and then I'm just going to wake up those mica powders again. by adding some striae. If you want a thicker line, you can actually use a paint stick. These little tongue depressors give a very, very fine line, which I really happen to like. All right, so now I'm gonna come back and add just a little bit of the uh, mica powder in isopropyl alcohol, 91%, uh, about a quarter of uh, an ounce to six to eight ounces of alcohol. So I'm just gonna kinda add a little bit. I want it to kinda come out in a strie type pattern. This is Clay, little bit of clay. Clay goes a long way. And I'm gonna come back in here with some copper. All 
All right, so this right here is making some really cool effects, guys. Um, with this finish, you need to be able to walk away. Let the epoxy uh, play. Let it uh, meld. Let it decide where it's going to move when you add these additives. This is not a finish where you can just run, 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 run through it. So uh, I'm going to let this sit for just a little bit, and I'll come back, and we'll play with it just a little bit more. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I've let it sit up. I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. It's kind of warm in my studio today, um, so it's going to kind of go a little bit faster. But now I'm going to wake up those mica powders again. And like I said, mica powders have a tendency to fall in the uh, liquid. And but as your epoxy starts to cure, starts to set up, it gets more like cold honey, where your particles aren't really falling. They're, they're kind of staying suspended. So this is a really cool little device. Very, very high technology here. It's a Bondo spreader. And I took a pair of scissors and I cut them. So it's like little teeth here. And it really gives a cool striae type uh, wood grain look. So I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna give myself some lines. Wake up that epoxy. Wake up here. If you really want to bring them in, you can take your hands again, go back over it, and wake them up again like this. It's your decision. Make this an individual piece. Make it your own. Get really creative. That's what's so fun about epoxy is you can take a technique and every time you do a board it turns out slightly different. So I woke them up again. I'm going to let them sit here for just a little bit and uh, again I'll come back and wake them up again and I'll continue to do this process as my epoxy set up and then right before we hit our point of no return I'm going to show you all a really cool trick. Hey guys, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit the little bell for future notifications. We would love to see you in our hands-on classes here at my studio. Check out my website, rk3designs.com, for descriptions of our classes, different options that may work for you, and class schedules. Okay, so we've let the piece set a little longer, probably another five minutes maybe, and um, I'm going to show you a really neat technique say you like this but you really want more distinct lines you want more of a, a distinct striate pattern maybe you're going for the wood grain look this is when you can bring in some of your spray paints so I'm gonna use the rust-oleum metallic it's uh, dark copper and I'm gonna do just a tiny bit of this I'm really not going for that wood grain effect on on this particular piece but if you do want more of a wood grain feel free to go a little heavier than what I'm doing so now I'm just going to bring in my spray paint. And you'll notice how the spray paint really reacts with the metallics that are already there. Now I chose to come in with the dark copper because it's going to be super subtle. Very, very subtle. Now that's all I wanted was very subtle lines. You can see again, I'm waking up these mica powders. I'm telling you, I love working with the mica. Now I'm going to come in with black very carefully I'm going to be coming in with black because I just really want this to be a subtle look. And you can see I'm really not reloading my paint stick. I'm taking the color that's there and I'm bringing it through. Really offloading it to the point where I don't have a ton of it. And also, I want y'all to notice, when I put color on my stick, I'm starting off my board, okay? I'm not starting, let me show you what happens if you start on your board. You're gonna get, I'll start right here. If I start here, I'm gonna get a big blob, okay? That's what I wanna avoid. So I'm gonna start off my board 
so that I'm bringing that off the edge. Now I'm really not worried about that blob right there because I know I've got other techniques and other um, things I'm going to be doing in this board. But that's a pro tip for you guys. Make sure you always start off your board and start moving before you get there. Okay, so that's about all the black that I want to do. I just, like I said, I just wanted to give a little bit of hint of depth. Uh, even though we had different color mica powders that brought in the depth, I wanted to give just a little more hint uh, by adding the spray paint. So again, we're going to let this cure a little longer and um, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've let it sit just a little longer, uh, probably about five minutes, not, not too long. And um, I decide, I love this finish, guys. And I'm always thinking in my mind, oh, I want to try this or I want to try that. So I'm going off script a little bit and we're going to try a little something different. So I'm going to bring in just a little more of the black. And I actually am going to do something I told you guys not to do. I'm going to start here because I want to get some color a little deeper. Isn't that what your mom always says? Don't do what I say, don't do what I do, do as I say. Yeah, well this is one of those situations. So, I just really wanted to get some neat effects with the black paint, because I want to use the, the um, almost said blow dryer, the heat gun. So now I'm gonna come in, and because my epoxy is starting to set up a little bit, I'm gonna get some really neat movement with my vein. I'm not doing a whole lot. I just want to get a little bit of movement in there. Now you'll notice I'm also messing with the strides of, that we did earlier with the mica powder and that's okay because we're going to go back and lay those down a little bit. Anytime you add heat to your epoxy, you're regenerating it. You're making it a little more fluid so you're able to work with it a little bit more. And in this case, I really wanted to wake up those veins just a little bit. Now, anytime you add heat, anytime you tilt a board, you're going to soften your pattern. So that was really important. Anytime you add heat, tilt it to get movement, you're softening whatever pattern you've laid down. So if you want very distinct lines, you don't want them to be melded. You want them to be very, very definite. You want to use less heat. Or if you use heat, you want to do like I'm fixing to do, and you want to go back and lay down your striate pattern. So, I wanted to get some really cool effects with that black, and I did, but I also smoothed out my pattern, and I want to wake it back up. Okay, so I think I'm just about done as far as manipulating the pattern. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to let this sit probably a good 20 minutes or so. We've let this board sit about 30 minutes and it's pretty warm in my shop today so my cure time is just about on schedule. So before I show you the next um, technique or way to get your micas woke up, I want to say I was playing with the board a little earlier and I had a little bit of resin left over and the color is from Color Obsession from Artist Till Death. She sent that to me. And it's a vivid gold. It's called 007 gold. So I'm going to, and I literally have a tiny, tiny, tiny bit left. So what I want to do is I want to take that. I'm going to heat it just a bit as I need it a little more fluid than it is. All right. This happens to really like to stay on the top of the piece, this mica powder. So I'm thinking it's gonna give me a really, really cool effect. 
Now, like I said, this was left over. So I'm just playing with this. And again, that's where the fun creativity comes in. Don't be scared. Get out there and have fun. All right, so I've added a little bit. And I mean, I'm talking tiny little amounts of this. And it's just gonna give me a hint of color. All right, so now our mica powder has set up. And because of the nature of mica powders, they like to sink down to the bottom of your resin or the bottom of your piece. So I'm gonna wake them up. And because we've let this set a little bit, you're gonna notice that you're gonna get a complete different effect. So I'm gonna take my hand. You could take a rag. You could take the glove off, your glove off uh, and drag it. A lot of times I'll take my fingers and I'll make them so I have these little finger things. And you take them and you're just gonna rub and go back and forth and cause some really cool effects in that resin. And because it's started to set up, your mica powders are gonna stay. There's three phases I like to teach in our classes to make people understand, help them understand the phases of working with metallics. When you first mix up your metallic, it's like putting particles into a glass of water. You stir them up and immediately those particles fall to the bottom of your cup. The next stage, which is why we waited a little bit, is almost like syrup. When you put those particles in syrup and stir them up, they eventually fall, but it takes them a little bit longer. The stage we're at now is like cold honey. Cold honey, when you put your particles in, you stir them up, they're suspended and they're really not gonna go anywhere. They're gonna pretty much stay there until the cure process happens. So that's where we are right now. That's why this look right here is gonna stay more in this pattern than it would if we have done it 30 minutes ago. So I have two different popsicle sticks, tongue depressors, whatever you wanna call them. Uh, I like using the very small one on this effect, but you can most definitely use a longer one. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna chop. And you'll notice the strings kind of follow and leave and I say strings, it's, it's that drip from the stick. As this starts to cure and as it starts to move, you're gonna get some incredible patterns and neat visuals with this. And what I'm doing, there's no rhyme to reason to this. I'm not going across, I'm not just doing X's. I'm very much changing up my pattern. And you don't even have to do your whole board like this. You may want to just come in and do certain areas to kind of bring visual creativity to that one area. Cool. All right. So, and like I said, we're at that cold honey stage. See that drip? See those drips? That's where you want to be, right there, where it's really drippy, okay? So the way you can find that out without hitting your board is come underneath and test your drips here. That way you don't have to mess up your board. Test your drips, see if it's where you want it to be, then you can go to the next step. So I'm going to hit it with just a tiny bit of heat because I have introduced a few little bubbles because I'm pulling and messing with the top of the resin. So I've introduced just a couple of bubbles. But now what you don't want to do, you add a lot of heat to this and you're going to take yourself back about four steps because you're going to make your uh, resin really fluid again. And that's not what you want because then your particles are going to sink back to the syrupy stage. So I'm going to call it quits and you will be shocked how in about four or five hours, this piece has moved and it'll be stunning. I'm really excited 
excited to uh, see you guys try this. If you post them on Facebook, tag me. I would love to see them. And good luck, and thanks for watching.